Hey everyone, today we're gonna to take a dive into the different numbers that make up a pair of glasses. Now, I don't mean that as simple as being just the numbers stamped into the frame or even just the numbers on your glasses prescription. We're gonna actually take and dive into both of those so we can really get a full understanding of what goes into making your pair of glasses and hopefully how to make them a little bit better. So the obvious choice, let's start with the one you all know and love, and that's the little paper with all these numbers on it that tells you what your glasses prescription is. There's a lot to kind of break down here, so we'll get into that and kind of skim over the basics of what's going on with the eyes. But the key takeaway here is this goes into here, the numbers on here, well, they don't really mean much of anything, but we're gonna talk about that too, because reasons, and I'm tired of having people argue with me about that. So, I even did another video on that. We'll link that one specific to the sizing of the frame and why those numbers don't mean a damn thing. This guy here, these numbers mean a whole, whole lot for what happens here, and more importantly here, and what happens in here, because believe it or not, this is what does all the heavy lifting. The eyes just are a tool that the brain uses. Mm -hmm. So, this guy, you've got, typically you're gonna have a right eye listed first, the power needed for distance correction, or if your eyes are still able to add plus power and accommodate on their own, typically we see that start to diminish around late 30s, early 40s, it's gonna fluctuate. And there's not really a set age that that happens at, but it does happen. So. If you're not there yet, the eye can still add the plus hour, plus power for arm's length, for up close, all those things, and it can still do it comfortably, then this is all you will have is the prescription for both eyes. That's gonna be, again, almost always the right eye first, and then the left eye right underneath that. I have occasionally seen it written right, left, that, it's not good. Right eye top, left eye bottom. Now, I actually filled in a prescription here that works really well for this because it goes over a lot of different things here. So we've got a little minus symbol in front of the first number on this one, which is gonna be the sphere power. That's the overall correction that's gonna be needed to get the focus front to back where it belongs on the retina. If that's all you've got, if your eye is perfectly sphere shaped, but maybe a short sphere or a long sphere, that's where this number comes into play. So that light actually falls into the right point and not in front of the retina or behind the retina. So the image is clear and in focus, right? Seems simple enough. And whether that's a minus or a plus, eh, for the, this concept doesn't really matter so much. Just know there are minus eyes and there are plus eyes. The minus eyes, your eyes a little bit longer. Plus eye, your eyes a little bit shorter. That matters for lens design, not so much anything else. It's an important concept for me to know. Now, the next one, we have more than one number, right? There's a lot more going on here. It's not just sphere, it's not diopter sphere only. We have a sphere power, a cylinder power, and an axis. All those together make the light fall where it needs to in the retina. The only difference here that you really need to be concerned with is the sphere power gets the light to fall front to back on the retina, and the cylinder power is gonna control around circularly to get the light to fall in place on the retina. So instead of being the right depth and maybe a little off to the side in one direction, that's what that cylinder correction is for. The axis just tells us what direction that power needs to be in to get everything lined up and sharp and in focus. When you have enough cylinder power, it's really cool. You can actually pull the lenses away and see it. I don't have enough and it's at the wrong axis, but I do have about a half diopter in this left eye. But yeah, not much I can do there. Now, the add power is exactly what it sounds like. That power is taken and added to these distance numbers to create the power and the focal length needed to see here, here, or here, or wherever it may be. 
The short version of that is your eyes are still doing a lot of the work until you get up to around a 253. Rarely see the three, really 250 is gonna be about it. That provides enough power to focus at 12 to 16 inches away from your eyes. Here, <laughs> yeah. So if you have less than a 250, you're either working farther away or your eyes are able to supply the rest of that power so it's not necessary to make the lenses do the rest of the heavy lifting. There's some fun concepts we could get into that, into with that and progressive lenses and how they allow that to deteriorate more quickly. I'm not gonna get into that today because I am not prepared with the studies and such to do that. And maybe we'll talk about that another time. But that is the basics of what these little numbers on your prescription mean. Now we all know there's a lot more that goes into a pair of glasses than that. At the very least, there is a pupillary distance. Some prescriptions will include that, some will not. I tend to side on the fence that it shouldn't be on there because it can vary from frame to frame, it can vary from fit to fit, and there's a whole lot of other variables there that really should be taken into account, especially with modern lens designs. And that's another little tidbit for you. A lot of these online providers you see are using older lens technology because it is more forgiving in that aspect. You don't need as much measurements to make older lens technology work and optimize it. If something is wrong in the measurements in newer lens technology, things downgrade quickly. Now, I said we were gonna talk about more than just the numbers on the prescription, and do that we will. So the numbers stamped into the frame, you will usually see two to three numbers on a temple, or you will see one number on the temple and two up in here in the bridge, behind the bridge. It varies from manufacturer to manufacturer as almost all things do. These sizes don't vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. So in some ways it's not like pants where if this says 50 millimeters is that very first number, that's gonna be your eye size. That means this lens is 50 millimeters across. Now there are some variances there. That 50 can be anything from a 49.7 to a 50 point four, three, four. I have seen 50.7, but that's pretty unusual. That's gonna come down more to the curing of the acetate or the material that's being used to create that big of a variance. Even cheaper metal frames, you typically won't see that wide of a range just because tolerances are tighter than that in producing them. The second number here, and well, let's break that down first because it's not always gonna be in this order. That very first number on this frame is a 50. Typically that is gonna range from 46 on the smaller side on up to, really you're not gonna see over a 60 to a 62 on average unless the whole shield front is the lens. In that case, you can see a 130 or greater. The second number there is this one. That's gonna be your bridge width. That is a little bit more telling, but because the manufacturers can change the cut and angle here so much without actually altering the distance between the lenses, which is what that number actually tells you, then it doesn't mean as much. As I mentioned, a lot of these numbers don't really tell you much about how glasses are going to fit for you. That's why I say, don't worry about the numbers, worry more about how the glasses fit. I have actually seen Kering recently has started doing this. They give you the hinge to hinge width of the front of the frame. And I think that is absolutely spectacular. Not really anyone else is doing that. I can think of two right off hand. So Kering, which is a holding company that owns a lot of different brands, uh, luxury brands specifically, Gucci, Cartier, that kind of thing. And I'm getting off on a topic we don't even belong on today. So there you go. We'll stop that there. But those two numbers together don't really tell you anything about how this fits or the width from, as I just said, hinge to hinge. Because the thickness of the material itself, where these horns are and how far out they come, and the horn is the piece that juts out from the side of the frame over here to the temple and then goes back over the head. In the case of these, that's almost six millimeters. So you take the 50, the 20, the 50, and then you've got to add six more before you can even really tell the width of the frame. And that's cool and all, but then how much it wraps is gonna change that number. So while if you, on paper, add all those together, and you have, what, 12, 100, 
20, 132. So in theory, this would be 132 from here to here, but back here, because the way it's adjusted, this one is actually closer to 134 overall. And that's here where it fits, where it matters. As you can see, the overall frame only fits really well. I have other frames that are 5416, or in the case of this guy here, that doesn't have the numbers 5316. Yeah, 5316. And you can see it fits the same, right? Overall width here, it's dead on. It gets fun, see? Throw those across the room. They're flexy, bouncy, don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. Now, on the last number, the one everybody wants to cry over, and the one I say really doesn't matter because it is worse than one sizes or pant sizes or shoe sizes or anything else because it can be calculated in a host of different ways, but that's gonna be your temple length. That you will see on average is gonna be anywhere from a 120 to a 150. Most are gonna fall between 130 and 140. It is in five millimeter steps. And that is how far this goes lengthwise. I say that with some caveat for sure because as I mentioned, some people measure it differently. Some people place the bend weird. This one, you know, it's pretty much perfect, but this is a 140, 145, I'm sorry. This is a 145. This guy over here that I just threw across the room for funsies is a 140. And you can see I've had to place that bend way, 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 way sooner than I did over here so that it actually matches the same. And you'll see if I had that more straight, this temple is actually significantly longer than this one. But this is a 145 and this is a 140. So this should be shorter, right? Well, like I said, there's a lot of variables there. Where they actually take this measurement is what matters. And that is taken at the bend on this one. Now, so what, 15, 20 millimeters more? So this one really acts more like a 155. Yeah. So when I tell you the numbers don't matter, even if you get snippy in the comments, it's because they really, really don't. Sip on that for a little while and we'll have some more fun and get back into proper fit and where the size does matter in another video. Catch you guys next time. Let me know what you thought about this. Probably made a few of you angry, at least one of you, because I just had to. 